Welcome back. It's time to get the comic book retrospective crew back together. This week, we're talking about the first appearance of Ghost Rider, Marvel Spotlight number five. And here to talk to me about that is always award winning comic book editor, writer Joe Corrado. How are you doing, Joe? I'm all right, Wes. How are you? I am doing fantastic. We've also got lifelong comic book reader, the voice of the voices, the men so cool they call the breed. Eric Breed, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. This comes out in May of 1972. Gary Friedrich is the writer. Mike Plug is the artist. Fantastic comic book. Obviously, Ghost Rider is a big deal. I think we've got three or four different versions of Ghost Rider. Maybe it's five now that we have the one on the Wooly Mammoth. So this is an important character in Marvel Comics. Gary Friedrich actually wrote a lot of stuff for Marvel, but I think a lot of people forgot about it. We were just doing something on another channel the other night from Not Brand Eck, and I believe he wrote the story. I know he was a writer on that. And he was a writer on uh, Sergeant Fury from I think the late sixties, maybe even into the early seventies. And I said, it's, it's just, yeah, you know, people don't associate Gary Friedrich because when you think of Marvel and there, you just assume Jerry Conway wrote everything. But no, Gary Friedrich did write yeah, his yeah. fair amount himself. <laughs> he was also a pretty big champion of creator rights, Joe. I know he ended up having a pretty big legal battle with Marvel, like a, what, like a decade ago. Unfortunately, he's no longer yeah. with this, but he yeah. was trying to get ownership back of Ghost Rider from him. Yeah, no, he, he had uh, sued for ownership back. Um, it uh, didn't go through the first time, appealed. Uh, they um, judged in his favor. Then Marvel ended up uh, striking you know, some sort of deal. I don't know if it's ever been disclosed or not um, with, with Gary. So, so yeah, I, I mean, it was obviously in, in Marvel's you know interest to do whatever they could to keep you know, all, all of the intellectual property under them. So I'm sure they kept it all and, and paid out, you know, Gary, what, um, whatever they could strike that deal with. So I imagine he, he wanted some more residuals and stuff on, on deals outside of Marvel comics themselves. We had the yeah. movies come out with Nick Cage, obviously had a mm -hmm. sequel to that expecting to see ghost Rider in the MCU somewhat in the near future. They finally got that character, I think back from Fox and whatnot. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Pretty big time character. Also, this time, Breen, this is a little bit different flavor of Marvel. Obviously, Marvel has always done things. I know at least at this time, a little bit more cutting edge, a little more, a little bit more adult type theme stuff. But this is pretty dark here. They're they're going with a lot of horror here. Well, yeah, in, in 1971, after the 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 Spider Man drug story and the Green Lantern Green Arrow drug story, the code kind of lost its teeth. And they relaxed it a, a good deal. So that allowed, you know, vampires, werewolves, zombies, and other creatures that go bump in the night to be used in comics again. And Marvel, you know, jumped in with both feet because you got Tomb of Dracula, Werewolf by Night, uh, the living, the living mummy, the living zombie, you Ghost Rider, and there's just it was just a flood, son of Satan. Next couple of years, that is the supernatural just came in with a vengeance yeah and ghost rider is probably the definitely one of the characters that stands out and is definitely well remembered let's get into marvel spotlight number five joe and when we open up we do see johnny blaze ghost rider well you only know he's ghost rider at the beginning at least and yeah. this is a kind of a different version of ghost rider he's very apprehensive he just doesn't want to be caught he doesn't want anyone to know that his head is flaming and he's kind of just avoiding people he's not really on a mission other than to be anonymous yeah, and um, like a lot of these kind of stories, it's, you know, anonymous, but then, you know, situations occur that force him to step in and have to take on this more sort of uh, heroic uh, role because, you know, a as we see, you know, he doesn't want to get, um, you know, caught or seen, but uh, looks like uh, someone is uh, in some trouble. We see some, we, we got guns, we got money, we got some gruffs. It's a bad time to be doing all that as uh, Ghost Rider is driving along. They end up in an alleyway, he's trying not to be discovered, and then they find out this guy might not be your regular witness because they want to snuff him out because they don't want anyone to know that they did what they did. And he starts calling up fire, and you're starting to see some of his powers here, Breed. So it's a pretty good introduction very cool character design definitely stands out as amazing yeah and you you knew it was 1972 because the one guy called his accomplice a dingbat <laughs> um but yeah he, he yeah he shows him what he can do they still don't believe it then he rides over him and they basically they're convinced and 
then the danger passed. He turns back into Johnny, and that's when we get introduced to Johnny. The Ghost Rider only comes out at night. That's the way yeah, I understood kind, it. Kind of the original before. Hulk premise. Yeah, so that's kind of what's going on here. We finally see his real name. He's Johnny Blaze, and we start getting some of the story behind this, Joe. Very interesting stuff. A lot of information packed in here, but it's really exciting stuff. When he's a young man, his dad, he does tricks in this kind of traveling show, and apparently he's doing some very dangerous trick. His father does not make it when he's a very young man, and he gets the opportunity from the man that owns the stunt bike show. He says, I can send you to an orphanage, or you can be raised by us. And his wife lets him know, you should come with us, and we'll raise you as our son. And he decides to go with that family. It is tragic. The art here, uh, too, in these pages, you know, like pages six, seven, all of it really, though, does hold up. It does feel um, like, you know, Mike is sort of pushing the, the boundaries of the medium here. Um, there's a lot of not being constrained to panels and, you know, open panels and, and some montages and things like that, that, you know, really help make this book uh, feel special. But yeah, it's, it's this interesting relationship he's sort of building uh, with this family and his uh, apprehension towards, you know, uh, stunts and, and putting yourself in danger because of, uh, what he'd experienced and uh, there's you know he, he finally starts getting out of his shell and then uh, you know we'll, we'll go into uh, what happened yeah so he's a bit apprehensive to do like stunt bike tricks because what happened to his father but he's in a stunt bike trick family we got this character named Crash who's pretty much a surrogate father his wife Raxanne is his mother figure and there's also a daughter in there and shockingly they end up being a little bit sweet on each other and there's a lot of relationships going on. And he's training for years to be like the next big star of this show breed. And all of a sudden, I think they're in the tent. There's some type of accident. His motorcycle's on fire. He doesn't want to burn the tent down. So he stays on it. He tries to put it out of danger. He ends up hitting a tree. The mother, Roxanne, comes to check on him. She pretty much considers him his son. And the bike just blows up on her. And obviously, she's, she's essentially mortally wounded. But before she passes away, she wants him to promise that he'll never do like a motorcycle stunt ever again in his life, in the show at least. Yeah, yeah she makes him promise he'll never, yeah, take part in the show. There's a scene where Johnny calls her mother. He goes, I always wanted to do that, and now it's too late. The mother's passed, and that leaves uh, um, Roxanne's the daughter. So oh, my that, bad. I got the names backwards. Um, I don't think they even said the mother's name. I, I but, think you're correct. <laughs> um, so then, then we go into the future, and, and of course, Crash doesn't know about the vow he made to his wife so he thinks johnny's a coward mm. roxanne thinks he's a coward but unbeknownst to either one of them he's been secretly training because he goes i'm not riding the show but that doesn't mean i can't ride for myself yeah and she comes she catches him as we're to find out roxanne is a roller a tad, coaster of emotion she's a tad fickle she, yeah, she's all say, over the place. She, she, she's, she, 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 people like her might have led to MGTOW, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, so she, when she finds out that he made that promise, she promises to love him. We find out that the dad is finally going to get the opportunity of a lifetime, but here's more of the drama of this book. He may not be able to do it. That's right. The show finally gets picked up. They're going to Madison Square Garden, the mecca of entertainment in America. They're going to get to do their show, but the dad likely isn't going to see it, Joe, because he's got the disease. That's all they call it. I assume it's cancer, but I guess it could be something else. And he's going to pass away, and he wants Johnny to take over. He said he wishes he had a son to take over the show and like be the premier attraction. Johnny obviously can't break his vow, and once again, he's called a coward, a chicken, Roxanne does the same thing, even though she said she loved him for not breaking his vow. Like I said, she's kind of all over the place. So Johnny's like, I got to do something. Madison Square Garden is in the future, and he needs to be there for that. I can't be in the show, but what I'll do is I'll do like a seance. I'll connect with Satan and become a servant and sell my soul so my surrogate father will live to see the show and he'll make it there. Not a great choice, if you ask me. No, and, um, and in all fairness, he... He doesn't get off scot free, so definitely not. <laughs> it never so. works out. and deals always blow up in your face. The yeah. devil is literally in the details. Yes. <laughs> so we get to this show, and the father makes it. You know, he's still alive, 
And it's time to do, I guess, the craziest bike stunt of all time. He's going to jump more cars than has ever been attempted in the world, Breen. And Crash is going to do the jump. And halfway through it, something happens. He kind of catches on fire or something. He falls kind of to his death. He dies right there, like then and there. And that happens. So Johnny is like, well, I need to do the jump for my father. And he gets on his bike and they're telling him not to do it. And he does the jump himself. And because he completed it and her father died, Roxanne can't forgive him. And she tells him never to see him again. And he's obviously very upset at Satan. He's like, this guy screwed me over. Couldn't see that would come. Yeah, Satan's getting a bad rap here. Crash did not die of the disease. He did not. He, he died by not by not clearing that 20-second car. <laughs> <laughs> and Roxanne, I was going to come out and say it, that bitch, she turns on him again. Because when he goes and does does what she wanted him to do all, all all along. Yeah, he said, you made a bad deal with the devil. You know, the, the girl you love is just, you know, a flake. It's like, man, yeah, this, this guy's got it rough. But then another, you know, heel to face turn. Roxanne comes in and informs Beelzebub. He can't handle someone who is pure of heart like a cross to a vampire. He can't do anything if she's with him. Because when she walked in, his head, his head was starting to flame up. And yes. she realized, because she saw some of his books, he was making a deal with the devil, or he already had. Yeah, yeah. she goes, yeah, while well, you weren't looking, I read all your books on Satan. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the devil, I said, who it does have a sense of fair play, even though he's a trickster, says, uh, you know, I, I, can't, you know, I can't do anything now, but, you know, I'll be back. The story ends with Johnny, you know, turning back into the Ghost Rider as day has become night. And that's kind of like the starting point for the series. And Joe, when Roxanne's around and he's in her arms and he wants to stay there forever, he can't become the Ghost Rider. Satan has no power over him, but she's nowhere to be seen in the present time. Apparently, she's not around. Maybe she left him again. Maybe she'll show up again in future installments of Ghost Rider. (laughs) Absolutely. <laughs> so we get the full origin here. We get to see some of his powers, but we still don't know what his mission here is, Joe. We're not quite sure what the Ghost Rider is all about, other than he is the servant of Satan and that he got screwed over and he's had a lot of tragedy in his life. Yeah. And, um, you know, spoiler, uh, there are more tragedies to come. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's not all just uh, happy go lucky shenanigans after this, but. Um, it's not you know, just running around in the in the, in the fields and playing on the playgrounds with Satan. There's no, some bad, but, uh, <laughs> bad but we do with it. We do later get um, you know, Gary uh, Frederick uh, introduces the character of uh, Son of Satan. I think in Ghost Rider number one, which happens, you know, many issues into um, you know Spotlight with with Ghost Rider spins off into his own series. But, yeah, he um, replaces yeah. Ghost Rider in Marvel Spotlight. Uh, you know, just also like when when people are looking through this comic, like I can't stress enough. This this issue came out in 1972. If you handed this to someone and told them it was a Marvel comic from like 86, 87, it would be I'd I'd be hard pressed to see someone you, you know even like dispute that if they weren't aware because. Just, I, I mean, the some of these panels and some of like just the design of Ghost Rider uh, would go on for you, you know you could use that for decades and they did uh, with pretty minor changes. The whole team really, uh, I, I think, figured something out that uh, helps make this character last uh, as long as he has. Absolutely, he's still a major player in the Marvel Comics universe. About to be a major player, I believe, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Where did he show up? He showed up in the third season. Well, no, he showed up in um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one in the car version. I guess Robbie Reyes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. The ghost driver. <laughs> the ghost driver. We should see Johnny Blaze sometime in the future. So, Breen, if people want to get this, obviously the very first appearance of Ghost Rider, Marvel Spotlight number five, like an original copy, is going to be very expensive. What kind of trades are out there for? Well, about three months ago, this came out, the first Ghost Rider Epic Collection. It had been on Marvel Masterworks, um, and I, I'm sure there's there's a showcase, or I'm sorry, an essential black and white, but those are all out of print. Absolutely. So, Joe, what are we talking about next? What are we going to talk about next week for our comic book retrospective? Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, back at D.C., uh, we're going to visit uh, D.C. Comics Presents number 17, 
uh, which uh, features some more uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez art. Uh, and it's a Superman, a Firestorm team up against Killer Frost. That sounds amazeballs. As Breen mentioned, this was the age of monsters again in Marvel Comics, the code had changed. And we even got Captain America fighting werewolves. Could it really happen? Did we see Falcon turn into a werewolf? If you haven't seen this retrospective, this is a classic Captain America comic book. Absolutely fantastic. Definitely check this one out. If you don't see it there, there's also a link in the video description. 